What's up guys, it's your boy Milan Miguel, back at it again with another video. Today's episode 23 of the AC Milan vlog series, so here you go. But half time! Well done young man, that was... Frost on my rally look like grass in the morning, now I'm gonna help me try to shake my hand, I'm on. So let's get straight into it. News update. We have Rade Krunic will be out for a month, maybe, possibly more. He has suffered a stress fracture on his right foot. He'll be taking an x-ray in about a month, so we'll see how long he'll be out for. It's kind of a blow for the team because Rade Krunic has been quite useful for the team in rotation. But with that being said, Lucas Bigley is back in the squad, so it kind of balances out. But hopefully he has a speedy recovery because we'll be needing him in the upcoming matches. We also have Christoph Piontek throwing shade at AC Milan saying that Milan changes their striker every year. Personally, I didn't like that because like, dude, we gave you plenty of opportunities to clean up your act. You played practically half a season without any changes. You started almost every game. But with that being said, you know, shade is shade, and the curse of the number nine still lingers, you know. Piontek was fine when he had the number 19, but he switched to number nine and suddenly struggled to score. Rumor says that Lionel Messi is seeking a exit from Barcelona once his contract expires, and Mario Yepes, ex-Milan player, is convinced that he's going to try to bring Lionel Messi to Milan through free agency. Personally, I don't know. It could happen. Like, think about Cristiano Ronaldo and Juventus, but do I see it happening? Probably not. We also have a rumor of Thiago Silva returning to the San Siro. Thiago Silva's contract expires this summer and he hasn't ruled out a return to AC Milan. It'd be nice to see a return from Thiago Silva with Ibrahimovic. The two departed back in 2012 to go to PSG. And it'd be nice for them to both reunite and end their careers at Milan. So we'll keep an eye out on that. Let's get into Serie A fixture number 23, the Derby della Madonnina, uh, the Milan Derby, Derby Milano, whatever you want to call it. It is the derby between AC Milan and Inter Milan, the two rival teams. Now, last time we played in the derby, or the derby Milan lost 2-0 to Inter, where there was the deflection, the uh, and Leao scored an own goal, and then there was also a goal from Romelu Lukaku with a 2-0 defeat. So. Inter had bragging rights, but now it's our turn to try and get bragging rights. If Inter wins this game, Inter goes above Lazio. Um, the title race is getting very, very slim. Juventus drops points, losing to Hellas Verona 2-1. But if Milan wins, Milan goes up the table from 8th to 6th point, which would be crucial in the Champions League race to get into top four that four spot is still up for grabs so let's get into the starting lineup we have donnarumma conti caer romagnoli theo hernandez and in the midfield we have castillejo kessier benacer and then we have Rebic. we also have chalanoglu and ibrahimovic up front i think we're playing a 4-4-1-1 um, because it seems like Chalanoglu is playing more of a trequartista role as like an attacking midfielder as he did when he played in the Bundesliga. I have got to say though, with this game, Milan started off pretty well. They started out really well. Um, passing was nice, attacking high press on Inter. Inter looks a little bit scared on defense. And in the ninth minute, we had an opportunity where Hakan Chalanoglu sets off a strike from outside the box and it hits the post in the ninth minute. Um, 
After that, there were a couple more opportunities created. Brevich had a couple of opportunities. But for the most part, Milan looks super solid. They're dominating in the midfield, which is something that nobody expected to happen. Inter plays a 3-5-2 with five midfielders. you think that Inter would dominate, but Milan is dominating this game. It seems like Milan have more grit, more determination, more passion, and they want to get this win. Now with this fixture, Inter doesn't have the strongest team. They're missing the likes of Bastoni, Handanovic, and Martinez. Huge influences on their team, but the Goalkeeper Padelli makes a huge mistake and Zlatan heads the ball to Rebic to get the 1-0 goal. Rebic strikes again, scoring his fourth goal for AC Milan in City A. And then about five minutes later, we get a corner kick and another mistake and Zlatan heads it home and Milan are up 2-0 to Inter Milan. Now, what Milan needs to do in the second half is to continue to play the way that they're playing and just hold out for the win. These three points will be very vital for the Champions League race that we are running. Into the second half, uh, Milan are up 2-0 at halftime. Pretty much dominated the first half. You know, they controlled the possession in the midfield. They were good in the attack. They had constant high pressure on Inter. But in the second half, the momentum swinged the opposite way. In the 50th minute, there was a foul, but the referee played an advantage and Brozovic just shoots a rocket, soldier. an absolute screamer, and it's 2-1. Later on, 90 seconds later, Milan concede again. Now, the goal that we conceded, I believe, was offside, but VAR did a check and some way, somehow, Alexis Sanchez timed his run perfectly. With that being said, with the run, Alexis cut into the box. Jonah Roma thought he was going to shoot, so he came out. And then Alexis Sanchez passed it off to Vecino. Vecino scores, making it 2-2. Inter scored two goals in, tw in 90 seconds. Two goals in 90 seconds. So it's 2-2 and the game is tied. Inter just had the momentum. It seems like when Inter scored and tied up the game, Milan just gave up. They didn't have any answers to Inter's defense or whatever Inter was doing. In the 70th minute, there was a corner kick. Uh, honestly, there was no way that this goal could have been stopped. Everybody was pretty much marking their man, but Stevan DeVry lunged to make a header and some way, somehow, it just goes in top, to the top corner. There's no way that Donnarumma could have saved that. Nothing you could really do about it. Inter goes up 3-2. And then, Erickson gets introduced into the game. Erickson comes on and he hits the post. Oh, what an effort that was! Literally two minutes after the goal from Stefan Dubrai, we had a change in which Rafael Leal came on for Samuel Castillo. Castillo did very well this game. Um, he set up one of the goals. He just gave his all uh, per usual. So good performance for Samuel Castillejo. And then after that, we also had Lucas Paqueta coming on for Frank Cassier. Paqueta did create a couple opportunities on the attack, but nevertheless, no goal. Bonaventura came on also replacing Ante Rebic. Pakita popping it up towards Ibrahimovic. In the 89th minute, Zlatan hit the post. There was a cross that was played into the box. Zlatan heads, lunges with the header, and we hit the post. It could have went 3-3. Let's not forget also in the first half, Stefan Debray saved, made a beautiful clearance, 
saving Inter from conceding a third goal and going 3 0 down. Then in the 92nd minute, it was 90 minutes, 4 minutes of added time. 92nd minute, Romelu Lukaku gets a cross from Victor Moses. I don't know why Simon Kerr decided to duck instead of at least try to attempt to head the ball out. And Inter goes up 4 2. The game finishes 4 2. It's quite interesting because the game was quite even. Milan had 56% possession, 17 shots, two on target, 415 passes completed, while Inter had 44% possession, 16 shots, seven on target, and 311 passes completed. Overall thoughts on the game? Again, we dominated the first half, controlled the game, and coming into the second half, we thought that we were just going to win. We thought we were going to have to fight for it. Instead of us putting our foot on the gas, we put our foot on the brakes, and Inter came back. They won every 50-50 in the second half. They picked up their energy. They picked up their intensity. Um, everybody played further up the pitch, and once... Milan, once Inter tied the game, Milan struggled to find a way to come back. You know, Antonio Conte did something to those players at the half. He, he did something to ruffle their feathers to get them to come out and get the win. For us to concede four goals in one half, that is crazy. We lacked character. That's just simply what happened. We, we didn't know how to come back when we faced some adversity in the second half. We didn't know what to do once we conceded a goal. And it seems like we just froze. Our, our mental aspect of the game didn't change at all. This is our first loss of 2020. We could have won this game, honestly. If we would have just kept our foot on the gas, we could have won this game. But there was a decent amount of positives. That first half was absolutely great. We just need to build up on that first half and continue. You know, we dropped points last week. We dropped points this week. We have plummeted from eighth to tenth place. While our rivals enter are at the top of the table now. This game was meant for us to stop their party to win the scudetto and also to keep the hopes for us into trying to get the Champions League spot. But nevertheless, we gotta keep on striving, keep on pushing, we gotta keep our heads up and continue to do the best that we can. We'll be playing Juventus on Thursday for the Coppa Italia semi-final. So, I'll see you guys then. Peace.